to promote thy honor and glory, to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of this country, and of those whose interests thou hast committed to our charge. Amen. Correction and approval of the records of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 14th March 2024. Honorable members, the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 14th March 2024, is before us for correction and approval. Can any honorable member please move that the said record of votes and proceedings be considered and approved? Honorable member for Nyani. Thank you very much, honorable speaker. I rise to move a motion for the correction and approval of record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 14 March 2024. Thank you, Honorable Member for Nyani. Any second, Honorable Members? Honorable Member for Basse. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to second the motion. Honorable Members, it has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 14 March 2024 be considered and approved. Honorable members, we all have the record of votes and proceedings with you. As usual, we look through it page by page, beginning with page one, followed by your comments and observations. Page one. Hmm? Honorable member for Sabak Sanjal. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, on page one, number four, laying of papers and reports. Laying is not properly spelled. Yeah, thank you very much, Honorable Members. P number four on page one, instead of L A T I N G, it's L A Y I N G. Laying. Honorable Member for Nyanija. Yeah, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Mm. Again, on the same point, line of papers and reports, I think it should read as report of the Standing Committee on Public Petition. Not actually peti Public Petition Committee, but it's a Standing Committee, as it is in the Standing Orders. Thank you. Report of the Standing Committee on Public Petition. Any more on page one, honorable members? Honorable member for Sani Mentre. Thank you very much, honorable speaker. Um, on the same page, on the page, uh, sorry, number four, um, which reads, paragraph, which reads, um, report of the public petition or the standing committee um, on public petition, com public petition of the National Assembly on petition from concerned staff of the Gambia. I, I think um, the word the, T-H-E, is repetitive. So I think we need to delete the word the on petition. We leave as it is, as, as that one. Thank you. We delete what? Um, okay, I'll read it again. The report, report of the um, Public Petition Committee of the National Assembly on 
petition instead of on the petition from concerned staff. So we delete the word B. I think the, B, the, the honorable members, can you comment? I think it is okay. It is okay as it is. Pardon me? Now on page one. We move to page two. Honorable member for Iliasa. What about the mic next to next ones? Are they on? Yeah, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Um, Esa Conte was not uh, present. <laughs> number? And uh, his name? On, honorable, which number? 30, uh, 40, 42. Pardon? 42, 42. 42, yes? Esa Conte, Gimara. He was not present that day. Yes. <laughs> and uh, his name was captured. Uh, honorable uh, member, why is, is Esa Conte around? Honorable Esa? Yes, he's here. Uh, we, are, we are not present. No, I was not. I was happy. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, honorable members, number 42 should be deleted from present and move to. Where, where are you, honorable? Then uh, you move him to uh, honorable members absent with permission. Any more on page two? All right, honorable members, we move to page three. Honorable member for Sabak Sanyal. Thank you very much, honorable speaker. Page three, um, where you have the following honorable members were absent with, without permission. It's repeated. Which should be deleted. And it should read as the following honorable members were absent without permission. Thank you. Noted. Honorable members, that with should be, del should be deleted, should be removed. Honorable members were absent without permission. The with should be out. Thank you very much, honorable member. Any more on page three, honorable members? Huh? Honorable member for Nyani. Is it Nyani or Nyani? Yeah, Nyani, Nyani. Yeah. I don't know whether it should come on page 3 or page 4, but on the matter of the day, before the matter of the day was rest, there was a point of order. Despite there was a ruling, and I think it should be captured. There was a point of order from the Honorable Member for All Union and Deputy Majority Leader. Okay, honorable member, it will be corrected. Any more on page three? We now move to page four. Hmm? Honorable member for Sami. Thank you very much, honorable speaker, for the floor. The following honorable members took, D is missing, took the floor. Honorable Member Sami, the second paragraph, the third line, isn't it, on the page? The, the following honorable members 
took floor. Okay, took THE. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Sami. Any more on page four, Honorable Members? Honorable Member for Jara Central. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. On page four, um, item number three, laying of papers and reports. The report should carry us. Thank you. Noted number three, laying of papers and reports. Thank you. Any more on page four, honorable members? We now move to page five. None on page five. Page five. Yes, yes. yes member for Kiang East. Thank you, honourable speaker. Uh, thank you, honourable speaker, for the floor. Uh, motion without notice, order fifty-three C. Honourable Bilegi Tonkara, member for Kantura and minority majority leader, move a motion for the debate on the report to be suspended and for the committee to report back with strong resolutions and or recommendations for the uh, yes yes report oh, okay then after between report and B to be suspended honorable bilegi tunkara member for kantura and majority leader move a motion for the debate on the report to be suspended to is missing Comments? So we are two. Okay. Any more on page five? Honorable members, we move to page six. Honorable member for Sabak Sanyal. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. On page six, under consideration at committee stage, committee of the whole assembly, it reads at nine minutes after 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Should that be in the morning or in the evening? Yes. It's either in the morning or in the evening, not afternoon. Okay, that's fine, yes. Mm. Any more? Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 14 March 2024, be approved with amendments. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Thank you. Let me thank you all, honorable members. Clerk, may we proceed? Order 51, matters of the day. Matter of the day on escalating crime rates in the Gambia by the Honorable Jimmy Malo, member for Lower Balibu West. Lower Full of the West, sorry. Thank you, honorable members. My office is in receipt of a request made by the honorable member for Lower Full of the West. 
seeking permission under clause 511 and 2 of the standing orders to make a statement to the assembly on the escalating crime risks in the Gambia. Honorable members, having considered the request of the honorable member under the provisions of standing orders clause 513A, B, C, and D, and clause 515, and noting that the request has satisfied the standing orders provision, I now grant the honorable member leave to make his statement for the assembly. However, I wish to draw the attention of the honorable members to clause 518 of the standing orders that the time allocated for the matters of the day shall not exceed three minutes for each honorable member for the honorable members who may wish to make statements and the time allowed for matters of the day is 30 minutes. Therefore, I also urge honorable members to observe clause 51.9 of the standing orders for guidance. I now call on the honorable member for law of Ladu West to make his statement to the assembly. Honorable member. Thank you very much, Speaker. With your permission, Honorable Speaker, I rise to address the recent alarming increased killing and murder incident in the Gambia. In accordance with the standing order 511, it is imperative for the Honorable Members of this National Assembly to urgently address this matter, of, this matter to protect the, the lives and property of our citizens. The escalating violence in our beloved country is deeply concerning and poses a significant threat to the safety and security of all peace-loving Gambians. Lives and properties are being endangered on a daily basis, as amplified by the following incidents. The tragic murder case of Sakina Simia, a 60-year-old British woman, on February 20, 2024, where the body was discovered in a building in Xinjiang village near Kunkuja Mariama in Congo North. Valuable items were equally stolen from a resident. Alleged stolen from a resident and the suspect have been apprehended by the police force. In New Jersey, a man reportedly of Senegalese nationality, purportedly of Senegalese nationality, and a drama by profession allegedly killed his friend before fleeing the scene to evade arrest. However, the police are said to be due diligently pursuing the suspect. Furthermore, two robbery suspects along with other drivers have been detained by authority in connection with the shooting incident at Ali Sidi, a Mutanian businessman, uh, purported in Fajara. Moreover, Simiala Johnson, a 46-year-old Liberian woman, was allegedly killed on Sunday, 21st January 2024, in an incomplete building in Kerseri. Lastly, a 53-year-old resident of Sancha Basule Job was arrested on the 29th of February 2024 by the Senegambia police found in possession of suspected AK-47 rifle, D2 rifle and a bottle of pepper spray which seated by the roadside. These are, these are but some of the reports that I am able to gather on the recent wave killing incident. Infariously apprehended against innocent lives, while I use the opportunity to commend the commendable effort of the Gambia police force in swiftly apprehending suspect or investigating this incident. It is evident that it is evident further that actions required from the National Assembly to ensure the safety and security of our populace and their belongings. Therefore, in the light of this 
distressing development, I urge the National Assembly to come up with a resolution, strong work for that matter, that will prioritize the implementation of robust policies aimed at enhancing public safety and restoring trust not only in our justice system, but also in the law we take. On this basis, I submit the following recommendations for your consideration and action. First, let's strengthen the law, strengthen law enforcement by allocating resources to enhance police capacity, improve response time, and support community policing initiative. Two, implementing proactive crime prevention measures, such as neighborhood watch programs, public awareness campaigns, and initiative targeting at risk youth. Three, revising and reviewing and streamlining judiciary process to expedite trials and ensure safe justice for victims. Fostering, four, fostering partnership among government agencies, civil society organizations, and international partners to combat organized crime and address the root cause of violence. Five, in expanding the access to counseling, legal and legal aid and financial assistance for victims and their family through comprehensive victim support services. Honorable Speaker and my esteemed distinguished colleagues, allow me to finally submit to all of you, to all of us that as we elected representatives of the Gambian people, it is incumbent upon us to act decisively and safely in the interest of our nation and it is head on safeguarding the fundamental rights safety of every Gambian for a society for, for in a society where even one citizen faces danger none of us can claim true security it is through our collective effort and unwavering Result that we can foster a safe and more just society for all. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Lower Flood West. Honorable members, the floor is open for honorable members who may want to take part in the day to make their statements. Motion. Somebody, somebody is shouting something. Yes, honorable member for Bacau. Thank you very much, honorable speaker. I, honorable speaker, with your permission, I want to rise on a point of, on a motion, 50, 53K. Motion without notice. Yes. Remember. Yes, may I, may I hear you? Yes, with thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me the And this way, if these type of motions, how do I determine to know that it's of this thing when I don't know it? Un unless, unless you give me a chance to hear from me. No need. Go ahead with the motion. Yeah, Let me you. hear your motion. Yes, thank you very much for giving me the floor. I, uh, Honorable Speaker, we we are about to debate on uh, on serious uh, bills. On that note, I want to appeal to honourable members for for us to avoid having debate on the matter of the day. So I want to move a motion with your permission, Honourable Speaker, for us to go into serious business and avoid having. <laughs> Honorable member, I think this one is a very serious issue. Mother, um, members have been crying over here about mother. Until you, it's, only, it's only 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 
The, I think we can go ahead and then, and then have the, each member has not more than three minutes and the whole period is 30 minutes. And the honorable members, you will not see the screen. We will time you, the screen is not working. But at the end of three minutes, your mic may cut off. If it does not, I will not. I will not. Member, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me thank my colleague, the member for Upper Fladu, uh, Lower Fladu, rather, for bringing um, this timely matter of the day. I'll be very brief, though, but I just wanted to also say my opinion with regards to the matter. To sum everything up, I think we have to do away with the blame game now. Of course, we have a lot of security threats in our country together. The current, you know, announcement of killings, burglary, and all that in our, in our country. We, 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 we acknowledge that fact. But of course, we, the blame game needs to shift. We need to start taking up our responsibilities as members of parliament. We allocate resources for government to operate. When we say the police don't have enough resources to operate, that becomes our fault as representatives of the people. There was not a time that we have a budget in this National Assembly. And all of us stand to say, if there is no enough allocation for the, for, for the, for the, for the uh, for interior, the police and the securities, the budget would not pass. Nobody has ever done that here. I am taking this thing in a positive way. I think it is our responsibility to do the needful and stop the blame game. We can talk about, we will be counting killings in this country because they do not have the resources and we are not giving them the resources. So we come to chambers here and tell the people that government needs to take their responsibility. What are we saying? I think we have to start shifting the game. It is our responsibility to tell the government that we want to give resources to the police so that they can do what they are supposed to do. We are not doing that. So I think it is our responsibility. I just wanted to take this in a positive way. Of course. I understand the situation of the country. And I know the way we are moving in terms of security is not in line. But it's our responsibility. We cannot blame citizens, we cannot blame the government directly, we can also blame ourselves. So this becomes our responsibility, and I want to put that fact that we need to take it. When it's time for budget, let's allocate resources for the police. And let's see whether the government will not execute that. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Member for Olulum. I now invite the Honorable Member for Bikama North and Minority Leader. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as you rightly alluded, this is a very serious matter. If it has come to the attention of the National Assembly, we definitely deserve to look into it. And what the Honorable Member is merely calling us is for action is required from the National Assembly to ensure safety and security of our populace and their belongings. Everybody is affected as far as there is concerned. Nobody is safe. Now we are bringing this to attention of National Assembly. We should do the needful, just like what we did uh, to the other matter of the day that was later last week, we refer the matter and concern to the relevant committee, defense and security, to make sure the relevant authorities are engaged to alleviate the fear of the populace. Having said so, I will not agree with the previous speaker that in the struggling economy, Allocation of funds, the National Assembly can be blamed. We are only drawing the attention that we need to look into the situation of the mobility situation of the police force, and that cannot be solved that on the National Assembly. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minority Leader and Member for Brikama North.
I now invite the Honorable Member for Upper Flood West. Um, <clears throat> uh, thank you so much, um, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Um, first of all, I think I would like to thank um, the National Honorable uh, Member for Lower Fuladu uh, for bringing this uh, matter as the matter or, or this topic as the matter of the day, that is escalating crime rates in the Gambia. Well, I think um, this topic is very, very important because Gambia is part of the world and then cannot, Gambia cannot be an island. And then, as you all know, security is very, very paramount to life, just like the way health is paramount to life. So I think, for me, the little that I want to emphasize, I emphasize as far as um, this matter of the day is concerned, I think it should be a concerted effort, that is, from all Gambians, that if we want to see a peaceful Gambia, if we want to see a well-secured Gambia, each and every Gambian must be ready to be a police officer, just like if you go to other countries. But there are people living in these countries who will be harboring criminals. So at the end of the day, those criminals will go out there to do whatsoever what they want to do. So at the end of the day, uh, the blame game will continue. We know there are lack of resources. No one can dispute that. But the government is doing its utmost best to make sure that the security forces of this country, they are well equipped to make sure that they execute their duties as they want. But remember, Gambia cannot be exceptional. Just as I said, Gambia is part of the world. Anywhere that you go throughout the whole world, there are security lapses. But we cannot take that as a grant as far as this country is concerned. So for me, the message that I have for Gambians, please let all Gambians be police officers. Report all criminal cases to the, to the police and also all those criminals who... There should be that long life sentences, especially those who are... those who are found for other crimes that are very, very serious. But the moment when they give those people um, long life sentences, you know, that would serve as a deterrent for others not to do, you know, these things in this country. Because we all know what is happening in this country. A lot of stealings, a lot of, you know, killings happening in this country. And then remember those people who are doing these things in this country. They are harbored by we the Gambians. So we have to be security officers. Every Gambian must be a security officer. If you want this country to be secured, if you want this country to be safe, because Gambia is the smiling country. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Upper Flood West. I now invite the Honorable Member for Kiang West. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, this is a serious matter that uh, requires serious national discourse. Uh, Honorable Speaker, one thing is certain that we must stop shifting responsibility and blame to the other. We have institutions in the country. Each institution has a mandate and a responsibility. And in discharge of that responsibility, we allocate resources to you as members of parliament. Members of parliament, we allocate resources. A budget is drafted, appropriation is drafted in the cabinet. In 2023 appropriation, an allocation of millions of dollars, more than 10 million was allocated for vehicles, for police in this country. Do we know which vehicle was it bought for? Can we be given the report about that? On 2024, another allocation was made in this very parliament. This is the role of the parliament. This is what the parliament is supposed to do. There is no single ministry or institution that has enough resources during budget allocation. Tell me one institution. You can certainly one institution that has the resource allocation enough for their institution during the budget cycle. There is no one in the country. Honorable Speaker, on the 1st of March 2024, this year, a serious armed robbery happened in my constituency here in Kenya, where two bureaus were attacked and the monies were taken from those institutions. A vehicle was taken from MRC, Medical Research Institute. 
and the police could not chase or apprehend those suspects at the, at the spot of the robbery because they don't have resources, they don't have people. You want to see that blame back to the National Assembly for that? It's, that's unfair. Let the executive take the responsibility of security of the country. This is what the executive is supposed to do. This is what every executive or every serious member of the executive is supposed to do. But to tell us National Assembly is supposed to do this, X supposed to do that one. Do you think the security or the security sector reform is about protecting the president and giving security to the ministers? Each of them has ministers in the of of securities. Each of them have cost protection, not just the securities in their vehicles, but the security of their residents. But for us, with our mothers, with our fathers, are insecure. You want to see that blame to me is unacceptable. Nobody can take that. If you talk about insecurity of a country, it does not just mean people going to kill and armed robbers. We have recently seen here in this country, a citizen of this country called Bora Sisao has been detained beyond constitutional mandate. And after being brutalized by the police, he went to court and court justified it. He was vindicated by the court. Is that because of hidden allocated resources? That's the negligence of the police. You want to cede that responsibility to us? The executive must take, must take the responsibility. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Kiang West. I now invite the Honorable Member for Fonyi Jarol. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And then may I also thank uh, the Honorable that brought the matter of the day. I think I have to first and for most, refer to my, uh, to refer to the Gambia Crime Index. That is the level of crime in the country. Uh, you look at it, it's at 67.24%, uh, which is very high. People using and are dealing with drugs. You look at that crime also, it's at 62.5%. Vandalism and the theft cases is at 70%. Assault and robbery is at 54.17, uh, that is moderate. Corruption and bribery, 85.3, very high. In general, you look at what is happening in the country. Well, the first thing that we have done for ourselves is neglecting our security forces. We have stripped the powers of our securities to almost, I call it, zero percent. Today, we are feeling the pain. We are out to blame ourselves or blame government or blame whosoever. But we are responsible of what is happening in this country. On our hands. Our security is under, under the foreign security, where we are not protected. So we have to re recognize the efforts of our security by empowering them, by giving them what they need. Because today, being in the security service, it's just like maybe they don't have any other option or no other opportunity to leave the service. We all know what is happening there. In terms of their wages, in terms of their, uh, uh, what would I even call uh, salaries, in terms of their benefits, house rents, and other things. People today er enlist themselves into the security as a resource of providing there is no job opportunities for them. If not, our security will always be empty. Everyone will decide to leave the security field. So we have to recognize it, because today we are paying a heavy price on security. Every day there is death or a murder case, either reported or unreported. So everything that is happening here, I am going to blame ourselves in the name of what? Democracy. That sometimes we operate like there are no laws in this country. We have to empower our securities by giving them what they need. It's not about talking, it's time for us. What? good laws in our books just only to satisfy or just to be closed we have to make sure laws are implemented that's why we are here to make laws any law that we feel is a bad law let us just remove it but we can't put laws there and we ignore them in the name of democracy when
Thank you, Honorable Member for Fonyi Jarol. I now invite the Honorable Member for Banjul South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you very much for the mover of this um, statement of the day. I was very shocked when I had the member for buses trying to defy this because a couple of, couple of years ago, member of Bakao, I said Bakao, a couple of years ago, a lady very close to mine was literally killed, murdered in her home in his constituency, and I think she is very, he is very aware of that. Honorable Speaker, I think, first of all, we should address these matters constitutionally. Because somebody mentioned, and I was very happy when um, the Honorable Member for Opofuladu said that we should not harbor criminals. Not harboring criminals also includes giving mercy to criminals that have raped. What is the problem? Hmm? Okay. Thank you. So you need to start my time. Thank you. I think we need to look at Section 82, prerogative of mercy. Because, Mr. Speaker, a couple of weeks ago, all women were we, we were disheartened when the president gave mercy to murderers, to rapists in this country. And if we look at Section 82, I think this August Assembly must look into it and try to reduce the powers given, with your permission, 82.1 says that the president may, after consulting, and that is giving him more powers by saying that he does not need it if he doesn't feel like it. And A says that he, should, he can grant to any person convicted of any offense. Mr. Speaker, I think that is very serious. It means that you can kill today, be sentenced for life, and the president can choose to give you that mercy. So I think it starts from us. I agree when Honorable Member for um, All Yundum said that the um, blame can be on us, but unfortunately, I do not agree when he said it's about the budget. I think the blame is about making good laws that would at least contain some of the things that we have in this country and contain some of the powers that we give to the executive. Thank you very much. That is my concern. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Banjul Shout. And I invite the Honorable Member for Banjul North. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. It is not easy to talk last, but notwithstanding, I think the Member for Banjul South have already spoken my mind. But in that regard, um, understanding that in, if we want a progressive Gambia, we must enhance our security sector. And I am very happy that a member from the majority side came up with such a matter of the day, which is indeed a very big concern. And also going extra miles, giving us or providing us with evidence, because that is what is expected of us. We are here to make sure that we give information to the parliament that are very genuine and based on Decide so that at the end of the day we can make informed choice or informed decision. And understanding that um, the recommendation that he gave, I would want to urge him from the majority side to take the lead. It's very important because as far as security is concerned, it is everyone's concern. And I will keep on saying this in Parliament. A problem that is not solved is still a problem. But a problem that is solved is no more a problem. And I believe Parliament is the solution house. For God's sake, we are the only hope as far as the Gambian people are concerned. Let us always make sure that we make the right decision. We have the good laws written. But in terms of implementation, it's always a problem. A scenario that I can give, the last time when I heard that a lady was sexually abused who was mentally ill at the beach, in Banjul here, when I went to the police, they said they are not mobile. They cannot go with me with their vehicle. What can I do? I decided to take my own private vehicle and make sure that I can the police to take that woman to the police station and for her taken to Tankanga, which I believe is a concern. The city for that matter, even for the police to have mobility, 
is a problem. So the issue of security should be our priority as Taliban, but it should also be the priority of the entire nation, including or spearheaded by the executive. So in that regard, I submit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Bangu North. I now invite the Honorable Member for Joshua. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And thank you very much for the member for bringing this motion today. Honorable Speaker, today is about security. Everybody is talking about the security of this country, and you bring the blame on them. For me, even if we give them all the resources that it takes to run this country, it still comes to the same. Let's ask ourselves as parents, what is our responsibility as parents? Those doing the cleans are coming from where? From homes. Those doing the cleans are coming from homes. And we are there as parents to secure them, to ask them to stay. Who among us here will sit at night and wake up in, at, 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 at late at night to ask, to ask to see whether your kids are intact? You even leave your key outside to say when you come, you, you close the door or you close the gate. Let's take our responsibility as parents and train our kids here. We should train them. If those things are lacking, even with, with all the resources that we are asking for, tomorrow is going to be zero. We're talking about drugs, drugs in this country. It's coming to be secured by the security, the security men on this country. And yes, there is no respect for them. They desire to be respected. They desire to be given their juice. But you meet a security person on the way, you don't even care whether he's a human being or not. And tomorrow you want that guy to secure you, when they are not even secure. How is it possible for them to secure you? Let's take our stance as parents. Let's take our stance as, as responsible people. The government has a role to play. But can the government do it alone? I'm saying no. They can do it alone. Let's do it together with them. If the government is playing A, we play B. But I sit at home expecting my child to go, at, 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 go out at night, coming home drunk, and yesterday I'm giving him money. I don't know where I get the money to, 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 be, to become drunk. I don't know where even he get the money to buy an iPhone 15 for himself. How do you get the money? Do we ask about our kids on, on, on the way they, 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 they have their money? Do we ask them? They might be involved in drugs. They might, they might be selling drugs. And when you don't have it, what, what, what do we do? To kill or to rob is only very easy for you because you are tempted. You are addicted. All those who are doing this thing are who are addicted into drugs. When the addition is no more there, we are safe. Let's change our attitudes, let's train our kin, and let the government help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Joshua. I now invite the Honorable Member for Busumbala. Thank you, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I thank Honorable Member for Upper Fladu, Lower Fladu, for tabling this important matter of day. Killing in this country is skyrocketing. We are, the security forces are registering so many deaths in this country based on the fact that we are neglecting our responsibility and trying to shift blame. We all know the police are the primary enforcers of laws in this country. And there are laws. We have sufficient laws in this country. A law that we can enforce to make sure that we make this country a heaven. But if the primary enforcers of the law are doing selective justice, Selective justice in the sense that we have in 2018 container of drug was landed in this country at our seaport. What did the investigation reveal? We have a container of arm and ammunition landed in this country. What did the investigation reveal? And these are the primary cause that will plunge this country into chaos. Yes, because all these killings 
that are happening now are because these criminals have access to these guns. These people who are drunkards or, or, or the, 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 the smokers have access to these dangerous drugs. And if they use these dangerous drugs, we are not, we are not free. If they are intoxicated, they can do anything. So it is the primary responsibility of the government as an executive, because the police has the primary law enforcement officers and the drug squads should help us to reduce this uh, problem. Otherwise, we will continue to cry for the, uh, for the uh, uh, crime rates, high crime rate. We'll continue to cry for a high crime rate, but we cannot stop it because the primary cause is not being treated. Having said that, we need to avert our mind to justice also. When the criminals are processed at the court and are convicted, especially those convicted on murder charges, rape, there should be cause on for the president to just pardon those criminals. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Busumbala. Honorable Members, I have a long list, but this is going to be the last one, and that's the Honorable Member for Combo East. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor to speak. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I must concur with my colleague, uh, the Honorable Member for Lower Flooding, for this uh, very important matter of the day. But Honorable Speaker, I must uh, remind my Honorable colleague members here that yes, we should point our fingers to many of our stakeholders, but let us put this thing across to our own selves and uh, as households. See, uh, the level of uh, discipline and the level of uh, home training that we are about to see our families going through should be considered. You cannot be a family and you let them be with liberty without discipline to uh, cause uh, unrest and cause uh, dissatisfaction in public uh, 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 orders to make sure that, to thinking that the law enforcement agencies, if we get into statistics, Considering the amount of security personnel that are already employed to secure us, if you take the ratio as compared to the general populace here, it would, it would, be, it would be rocket science to say those security personnel should be responsible of our own peace and security. It is our own responsibility to start taking it. All these crimes are organized within our own localities and our residents. It is about time to forget about everything and collaborate as citizens, as people that live together, to make sure that we collectively join hands to secure our own country. Because the country is ours, it's not for anyone, and then the stability and the security of this country is in our own hands and is for our own good. We are not doing it for anybody. We are not trying to allow it be a season for anyone. Let us work together and strengthen our laws to make sure that People are put under order to make sure that anyone that is found wanting here would face the full force of the law to make sure that we are secured. That note, Honorable Speaker, I rest my case as if the uh, recommendations that have been put below here need to be considered and then be resuffled to make sure that we come up with a resolution to make sure that the security, the defense and security committee could pursue the, uh, uh, the security personnel to make sure that we are in order. On that note, I thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Lower Fuladu West, I think this is a very important issue. 
I want to uh, believe that the Honorable Member for Brikama North and Minority Leader in his contributions suggested a few things just like the, form, the other matters of the day that we had dealt with. I think the, the Defense and Security Committee will look into this and probably engage the relevant authorities and I please give Parliament feedback on whatever development that Parliament can do or can make recommendations or resolutions. And the Human Rights Committee. Pardon? And the Human Rights Committee. We recommended some. Um, and the human. Sorry. And the Human Rights Committee because we recommended some amendments in the Constitution as well. All right. What, what we can then do is we will then refer the matter to the AB, the ABC Committee. They will make referrals to the relevant committees. All right. Once again, every, I want to thank everybody. Clark, may we proceed now? Bills, Order 66, second reading. Second reading of the Gambia Legal Metrology Bill 2023 by the Honorable Minister for Trade, Industry, Regional Integration, and Employment. Thank you very much. Honorable members, you will recall that the first reading of the Gambia Legal Metrology Bill 2023 was done on Monday, 4th March 2024, and today is appointed for the second reading in accordance with Standing Order 66.2. In post one to Order 67 of the Standing Orders, I now invite the Honorable Minister for Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment to move a motion for the second reading of the bill entitled the Gambia Legal Metrology Bill 2023. Honorable Minister, please. You may. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Gambia Legal Metrology Bill 2024 be read for the second time. Honorable Speaker, the bill seeks to repeal the existing Weights and Measures Act of 1977. The drafting of the new bill is informed by the need to modernize the legal metrology legislation in order to reflect the advancements in science and technology in the areas of measuring devices and to address challenges posed by these instruments. The present Weights and Measures Act of 1977 and the Standards of Weights and Measures Act, um, Weights and Measures Rules of 1979 is deficient in some of the sections and not serving its purpose. The bill also broadens the scope of legal metrology in regulating measurements, not only in trade, but also measuring devices used in health safety, law enforcement, and environment management. The bill will therefore instill fair play in the utilization and application of metrology equipment during trade transactions, and thus ensure that the consumers get their money's worth of goods and commodities in trade transactions. It will thus facilitate the Gambia's participation in regional and international trade protect consumers and support the socio-economic development of the country. Honorable Speaker, the development of the Legal Methodology Bill to replace the current Weights and Measures Act of 1977 was supported by the West African Quality Program and process has been very consultative. The initial draft bill was developed by an international consultant after a thorough consultation with key institutions and stakeholders, including the Weights and Measures Bureau, the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Environment, National Environment Agency, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and members of the Codex Committee. In addition, the initial bill was subjected to a national validation, and a final draft was submitted to the Ministry of Justice for review and legal scrubbing. The Ministry of Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment had also worked closely with the Weights and Measures Bureau and the Gambia Standards Bureau during the drafting of the bill. The Ministry, together with the Gambia Standards Bureau and Weights and Measures, also worked 
and agreed on the need to merge weights and measures into Gambia Standards Bureau as a single institution to strengthen capacity for effective enforcement of legal methodology like in sister countries such as Ghana, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, and South Africa. Honorable Speaker, the main objective of the bill is to ensure that consumers enjoy value for money in trade by strengthening national weights and measures systems. Too often, consumers purchase goods, example rice, sugar, and cement, that are less than the weight assigned to those goods. This bill is designed, therefore, to modernize the Weights and Measures Act of 1977 and strengthen the institutional capacity of the institution for effective enforcement of legal methodology in the Gambia. Technological change facilitated the development of a wide range of new measuring instruments and processes and a massive expansion in the scope of metrology. The current Weights and Measures Act has gaps in the sense that, apart from trade, it does not cover the regulation of measurement instruments or measuring instruments used in law enforcement, health and safety, and environment. The bill will therefore help address these gaps to complement traceability and ensure confidence in the integrity of the national measurement system. The drafting of the bill has been very consultative and participatory and thus emerged national consensus to merge the Weights and Measures Bureau with the Gambia Standards Bureau. Once the bill is passed into law, Honorable Speaker, legal metrology issues will be administered by the Gambia Standards Bureau under its Department of Legal Metrology. The amalgamation of Weights and Measures Bureau with the Gambia Standards Bureau will enable the Legal Metrology Department to leverage on the strength of the Gambia Standards Bureau, particularly on the verification of its measurement standards and use of technical staff to support its work. The new Act will also enable the Bureau to mobilize more domestic resources through the registration, certification and licensing of numerous users of measuring devices as well as verification of measuring devices regulated under the Act. This will enable the Bureau to reduce its dependence on the government for funding its activities, hire more competent staff, expand its presence, and strengthen the effective enforcement of legal metrology through the, or throughout the country. This is in line with government's policy to streamline departments and agencies for better efficiency and sustainability. Ways and measures as regulatory body often march with standards bureaus to help strengthen the Bureau as it can raise the necessary financing to support the capacity building of both institutions. This is because the resources base of Standards Bureau is limited as they often rely on testing services since standards are often voluntary and sales of standards does not attract much money despite the expenses associated with standards development. The Bill Honorable Speaker will help to protect the general public from the consequences of false measurements made in trade, law enforcement, health and safety, and environment management. It will also grant type approval of measuring instruments as well as issue licenses to manufacture, import, use, and maintain measuring instruments in trade, law enforcement, health and safety, and environment management to facilitate the verification of measuring devices used for the purpose of the Act. The Gambia Standards Bureau will keep in its custody the Departmental Legal Metrology Measurement Standards and Regional Legal Metrology Measurement Standards at the regional level, respectively. The measurement standards are 